Hello and welcome back to the channel. Um, so you join me at the beginning of what is going to be quite a, a week, a, a week's long adventure of, of photographing wildlife. Um, we've got lots and lots of things in store for us this week and my aim will be to produce a series of shorter videos that we're um, that I'm going to put together this week. So I'm in Scotland. Um, I'm currently in Dumfries and Galloway. So this afternoon we're going to go to a red kite feeding site that's uh, close by and um, they feed the red kites there each day at two o'clock. Um, I've done this before at Tolly Red Kites in Scotland and Gigrin Farm in, in Wales and it is a true spectacle. You know, you get hundreds of red kites swooping down, picking up the meat that they throw out for them each day. Um, not everyone's cup of tea because obviously it is f feeding uh, wild animals and uh, but I have to say these feeding sites have meant that the reintroduction of red kites a species that were you know driven out of the United Kingdom has been really successful and we're getting red kites now covering more and more of the country which can only be a, a good thing and I think the feeding sites are a, are a big part of that. Um, tomorrow we are at Alan McFadden's uh, hides, so that's Scottish Wildlife Hides, a place that I've been looking forward to visit for some time now. Um, and we're in the Sparrowhawk hide, but I'll tell you all about in the, that in the next video. And then we're off up to the Cairngorms. <clears throat> and um, while we're in the Cairngorms, I've got a guide that's taken me up to try and find the mountain hare. So I've been trying to photograph mountain hare now for weeks in the Peak District with absolutely no success. <clears throat> so. The main aim of this week is to come up to Scotland where there is a much healthier population of mountain hare and, and we stand a good chance of seeing them. However, um, it's forecast a lot of snow this week and we're in the Cairngorm Mountains so it's going to be interesting, that's all I can say. Um, I think it's definitely going to be an adventure uh, and I'll look forward on taking you along that. And then to finish the week off, um, we're at um, Neil McIntyre's uh, uh, hide. It's not a hide, it's, it's photographing um, crested tits. And again, that's a species that I've, I've managed to photograph in the past, but they've been at range and it's been a heavily cropped image and something that I've not been um, that pleased with. So um, he's got an area where he has uh, crested tits coming quite close and you don't even need to be in a hide. They're quite, they're quite friendly. So um, we've got that on Friday. So a real action pack week. So come along for the journey and see what I see. So we're here at the Red Kite Feeding Centre uh, and I'm just going to, you probably can hear them calling above me right now, uh, but I'm just going to kind of talk you through what, what my plan is. Uh, just out in front of us here, and I'll turn the camera around in a moment, there's a, there's a table platform and I would imagine that they're going to put feed on top of that. And then there's also a grass area in front and they'll scatter um, the meat onto the, onto the grass area in front. And what you'll get then is the kite that are circling at the moment and we've probably got We've probably got about 20, 30 kite um, circling above us at this moment. They will continue to circle and then they'll take it in turns and they'll dive and swoop down and, and take uh, the meat. Now there, there is actually a pecking order when they're doing that and the, the higher up the hierarchy, the earlier they can come down and, and take, take the meat. And then what's quite incredible with kite is they'll eat it on the wing. So they will carry on with it in the talons, they'll turn it around and then they'll, they'll pass it up to the mouth on the wing and they'll eat on the wing, which is quite incredible to see. Occasionally, um, if a red kite dips in before it's supposed to, in the hierarchy, there, there can be some aerial battles and that makes for some fantastic photographs. Um, but ultimately here, we're gonna be looking for fast shutter speed um, and probably they're just doing exactly what I've just said in front of me now. Um, that at fast shutter speed, um, probably shooting between f5.6 to f8, so that they're, that they're all in focus. The big birds, red kites. Um, 
and then hopefully we'll get some fantastic photographs it's just a shame the clouds have all come in and it's threatening to rain because an hour ago we had we had beautiful sunshine but it's passing through quite quickly so hopefully we might get some some good light <laughs> It's all going now so everyone's gone because the light's not particularly great so my ISO's pushed up really quite high but because everyone's gone oh they are just going crazy going absolutely crazy and we're getting some lovely diving shots and the way that they're re reacting at the moment means that I can track a single subject and wait for it to dive and then track it in which is a fantastic way of photographing because you genuinely rather than spraying and praying you can you can track a single subject and it makes for much much more exciting photographs so we just track it lock it lock it and then when it dives take the photograph track it and I try and keep both eyes open so that I can see what what interactions the bird might have another kite coming in to challenge it uh, and it's important that you do that and then if you want to relocate bring your eyes off it bring your lens in and then you're on it straight away bring your eyes in and lock on it straight away And sometimes as they're flying away uh, you get a real good opportunity then for a bird in its environment shot because we've got the rolling hills behind 
um, and although the light's not particularly great those those hills will give a real nice contrast with the sky and the really nice red of the red kite so they're just a different photograph and definitely worth worth taking the shot but what has been very very clear is that the birds behave very differently once the people have gone <laughs> so perhaps go on a day where there's nobody here coming in nice that one's coming in oh. so then they push right off like this and then it's just a case of waiting until they build up in numbers and you can hear them calling all the time they build up in numbers and then boom they come straight back down there's not that much meat left now So that brings to the end another video um, it's been a truly unique experience I've done uh, red kite feeding stations a number of times now and I think what uh, I'm beginning to learn is that no two are the same and the way that the red kites behave is different depending on the site that you go to um, the red kites became braver and braver they're just flying all around me at the minute it, it, it's quite difficult to concentrate when they're flying all around you um, they got braver and braver as the, as the more people left uh, and when it was just me at the end then um, they were coming in really really close far too close for the 500 i had, I had to keep switching to the 70 to 200. Um, if i've got some photographs if i've got some photographs um, i'll pop them up on the screen now for you to enjoy enjoyed that please give us a like if you've not yet subscribed please give, a, give me a subscribe it don't cost you anything and it does wonders for my channel if you want to drop me a comment in the in the uh, comments below I, re I respond to all comments and then until next time ta -ra.